This tutorial is about the concatenation of values in MATLAB to create larger vectors, matrices, or strings. A concatenation is exactly the same as declaring a vector or matrix variable. In fact, the declaration of a vector is simply a concatenation of scalars side by side. For example, v equals 1, 2, 3 concatenates the three scalars into one vector. In the same way, I can create another vector, w equals 6, 5, 4, and concatenate the two vectors together by typing x equals open bracket v space w. This creates a single vector that has the two vectors v and w side by side. Keep in mind though that this is only valid as long as the dimensions make sense. For example, if I try to concatenate a row and column vector, like y equals v space w transpose, I will get an error, because it doesn't make sense to concatenate a 1 by 3 vector with a 3 by 1 vector. In the same way as you can concatenate row vectors, you can do the same with column vectors. For example, z equals v transpose semicolon w transpose will create a single column vector with v transpose on top and w transpose on the bottom. Just as you could concatenate scalars into a matrix by using a combination of spaces and commas for row spacing and semicolons for column spacing, so can you do the same for any appropriate entries. For example, a equals v space w semicolon w space v creates a single 2 by 6 matrix. Again, this is only valid if the dimensions of the elements you are trying to concatenate are consistent. Let's declare a new vector, t equals 8, 9. Now, let's try something a little more complicated. b equals v semicolon w, close that, space t transpose. As you can see, this creates a 2 by 4 matrix where the 2 by 3 submatrix to the left is comprised of v and w, and the last column is t transpose. Equally, I could have done this in two steps. I could have first declared c equals v semicolon w, and then b is equal to the whole matrix c and t transpose. And that'll give me the same thing. Again, this makes sense as long as the dimensions are appropriate. Here is another complicated example. D is equal to, again, a submatrix of V semicolon W semicolon V. So we have three rows. And then another concatenated vector, T transpose and zero. So the dimensions make sense and we get a single three by four matrix. I could have again done this in several steps. I could have first said E equals the submatrix V, W, V. Another vector U is equal to T transpose and a zero on the bottom. And then I could have concatenated them together by saying E and U are going to be side by side. And that'll give me the same thing again. Once more, as long as the dimensions make sense, the concatenation makes sense. One more useful application of concatenations is that of creating strings. A string is nothing more than a vector of individual characters, so the same rules apply. For example, if I have the strings s1 equals hello with a space and s2 is equal to world I can concatenate them into one string using s3 equals s1 space s2, and that creates the string hello world. A nice use of this is to insert variables into your strings. Remember, you can only concatenate things together that make sense. Specifically, you cannot concatenate a string and a scalar. However, there is a useful built-in function in MATLAB, num2string, that will convert a numerical type to a string type. For example, let's say a equals 4, 
S4, another string, is going to be the number I am thinking of is. And we'll create a message out of this, a concatenation of two strings. And it's going to look like this. S4 space. Now we have to have a string here, so we'll use num2 string num2str of a. And when we do this, we get a single string that says the number I'm thinking of is 4, where the variable a contains the number 4. Altogether, concatenation is a powerful and very useful tool in MATLAB. You will likely see many places while programming where it will make sense to use it.